the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Because I feel like there's just been so many breakout players for the last couple of years as this team has just turned into a juggernaut in the NL East. Matt, who do you think is the next Braves breakout player? Who do you have circled as like the next guy that uh, is going to be a linchpin of this core going forward? So there's a couple of answers to that. And it's funny, we went from Falcons chaos to one of the more buttoned up organizations mm-hmm. in sports. Right. You know, the line of structure, you know, who's in charge, you know, how it all works. Uh, so I've already predicted Austin Riley, I think, wins the MVP this year. Now, he's already broken out. So that's not yeah, a he's not a breakout. Yeah, we can't do that. So I, I think he goes from really good to great, I guess, is my point. But there's mm. there's only like I mean, everybody else is sort of broken. Feeling that he can read. But mm. Robert Acuna is he might goes number again. He's as great as he can be. Right. Um Sean Murphy's a really good catcher. Uh, Ozzy's a tremendous second baseman. Matt Olson hit 54. So if I'm doing the everyday players, Michael's the only one who has a real big ceiling that he can reach. Spencer Strider won 20 a year ago, and I don't think he's figured out really how to pitch. I think the next step for him is like adding more weapons to his arsenal, which is frightening. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I'm not trying to cop out. I don't know where you go with that because the core is so good and so defined that I, I would think – the only place to go is Harris because I think he's got 30 home run potential and 25 stolen, 35 stolen base potential. And he's already shown you that he can hit 300 and have an OPS in the eight twenties and the eight. Like he's the only one. Everybody else is established as a star or borderline superstar. I wonder if it's a pitcher. Maybe it's AJ Smith. Oliver, maybe it's one of the arms, maybe Walter at right out of the gate here. I mean, I just wonder if that's the next big star is like oh because spencer strider it's just now he's just an ace and maybe the best pitcher in the nl like that happened very quickly and sure. way ahead of schedule i wonder if that's the next kind of I mean, it could be. Those, those are good candidates but they would it would take some circumstances in other words mm. you'd have to have an injury or two right which is not out of the realm i mean you're you have mm. a 40 year old charlie morton and a, a perennial banged up chris sale so smith shaver and waldrop are going to get their starts but mm-hmm. pitching is such a tricky thing to project that. Like, what we've seen out of Spencer Strider is so atypical. Like, you don't usually come in and pop the way you do. Typically, it's Kyle Wright struggling for a year and a half, if not more than that. It's people screaming that you need to send him back. Kyle trying to figure his stuff out. And then, okay, maybe it pops in year three or four, whatever it is. So, you're right. Maybe it's Waldrop or maybe it's Smith Shaver. But I've learned enough around this young pitching to never try to think you have it figured out because that that's the trickiest game of the ball. Absolutely. Um, you didn't mention left field, though, and I'm very curious uh, here. Like, I've seen a lot of Braves fans just pencil him in, and we'll see if that's the case. But are you sure Jared Kel- uh, Kalenic, Kalenic, excuse me, I- I'm never going to get this right. Uh, Kelnick, just, just go Kelnick, you're good. Kelnick is an everyday left fielder. or And also, the two-part to this, does it matter done, if he nephew. doesn't end up being an everydayer? The Chase Thomas podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah.